good. Good, Bark. Good. Good, water. Good. Good up. Good. Good, target. Target. Good. Bark. Good. Good. Water. Good. Um, we are feeding them a variety of fish, uh, pollock, herring, and salmon, which is everybody's favorite. Islands! Islands! Good boy! Good, back. Good. Good, breach. Good boy. Good, up. Good. Good tuck. Good. Good target. Good. Good water. Good. <laughs> Good boy, Bark. Good. Good, target. Good, open. Good, target. Good, open. Good. When you say target, what does that mean? So it's one of the first things that we train our animals. Um, if we have a new uh, naive animal or a baby animal, 
Um, we can't tell them to go on a scale to weigh them or to go into a uh, different um, water access to socialize with a new animal. Uh, if we teach them to touch their nose to whatever we decide is a target, which could be a buoy, a ball, the wall, or our hand, target. Good boy. Um, we can now manage this animal by them learning this behavior. Uh, and sometimes they can learn it within a day. And now I can take that buoy target or that ball and put it on a scale. I can put it into a new enclosure. Um, I can take it to the other side of the pool and he knows I just have to follow it um, and put my nose on it. And now we can manage this animal by knowing one behavior. So he's a smart animal. He is a very smart animal. Um, he is massive. Last week he gained over 85 pounds. And so this is breeding season. We don't control this. This is all his hormones and biological processes that are going inside um, him for breeding season. So this time of year, they gain a lot, a lot of weight because the biggest and the baddest bulls are going to be successful in gaining territory. Uh, territory is really important to them because that gives them access to females for breeding rights. And so right now, he's going to be gaining weight for the next uh, few weeks. He gets really high in weight to his max weight, which when he is a full-grown adult, um, he's going to be 9 this summer, which is going to be 24, 2,500 pounds. He's 1633 right now, so you can see how much more weight he still has room to gain. Um, and when he gets that large as well, then he starts to lose motivation in eating. And so he's able to have a territory and not leave to maybe lose access to his territory as well, up to 60 days. As well. And so they get all these fat stores to be able to, to stay out and make sure that, you know, that they're guarding their area. So he'll be nine. He will be nine years old um, as well. So. And how long do they live? Is he kind of like a juvenile? Or is he, um, he is just now out of his teen years. This summer is pretty official. Um, out in the wild, they're about 9 to 10 years of age, do have a successful territory um, as well. So, you know, the average intact male is 14 years old. Um, in human care, these animals are living 5 to 10 years longer than they would with their uh, wild counterparts. And how long has he been here? He has been here for five years. And so he was a lot smaller. He was um, a juvenile. In the last few years, he was a sub-adult male. And this year, we're really seeing him pack on that weight getting those really male altruistic behaviors going out for breeding season. So um, he is definitely a grown man now, <laughs> as you can say for him. How so did he, up here? Uh, he was born in the Netherlands in Hardewijk. Uh -huh. And so we are doing a maternal investment program or a breeding program. What do um, female sea lions need um, energetically to have a successful offspring to be able to nurse and then to be pregnant all over again and survive a whole year? Um, and so we brought him here to be um, our, our stud male in our, in our breeding program. We've had four um, stellar sea lion pups born here, um, which we're really proud of uh, as well. We are the only facility in over 30 years in North America to do so. And so we're learning a lot about these animals. The populations that are here in the, in the western stock in Alaska are endangered. Um, so this project has been going on for almost a decade. And uh, we're learning a lot. We're learning about hormones. We're learning new, more, um, less invasive way to answer these scientific questions out in the wild um, as well. What a pup development is like. Um, how fast do they grow? Um, contaminants, you know, within nursing. How much energy does a, a female need to nurse? Uh, and because the Alaska environment is really harsh. And that's why you also see marine mammals up here only having one offspring because they don't have enough energy to have two as well. So. You're, you're learning things as you... Absolutely, things. yes. And his name again is? Pilot. Pilot. So he is named after Pilot Rock, which is out here in the bay, um, which is a weather station, and also sea lions like to hang out in those areas um, as well, so. I was just struck by the intelligence. <laughs> He's amazing, and so um, right now, um, out in Habitat with Training Wise, uh, because we do have a large window um, in front of us, you know, we are a little bit limited. Um, but when we go into our other quarters where, you know, we have more access to move around him and things like that, um, what he can do is, is mind-blowing to us. And so training-wise, why is it important? Um, it helps manage. So number one training is going to be husbandry. And what is husbandry and training? That is going to be health care. Um, being able to brush their teeth. We brush their teeth, give them mouth rinses, take their weight. We want to see every single part of their body every single day to make sure everything's looking healthy. We want to see them move around. Those jumping out of the waters have a purpose, lifting those flippers up to make sure all the bones, everything um, is looking really good for them um, as well. And then, I mean, we do ask our animals every day to do something. And we're hoping they say yes, that I did my job, that you know they think it's positive um, and they're really excited to do them, that they do do them. And one of those great things that he just started doing 
this past year we're really uh, proud about is voluntary blood draws. Um, and so we're able to collect this sample from him to make sure he doesn't have diseases. Um, his blood counts are, <laughs> hey buddy, his blood counts are, are he's healthy, he's a healthy animal um, because we can't force him to do it. And so um, the fact that he offered to do these things on his own through training, um, he is our, our training partner with cooperative behavior. Um, it's something we're really proud about and that's why we're able to um, have really high standards of animal care here at the Sea Life Center as well. <laughs> Good boy. And so when he gets to his, his highest weight and um, he's not interested in food as much anymore, he's interested in something else and that's going to be where the females are. Um, training gets a little more difficult and management as well gets um, a more of like a puzzle as well. But we just have to find what's reinforcing to our animal at that time, uh, which is the females, and we can kind of use them as the bucket of fish to help get him to move where we need him to move. Good. Um, right now he's eating over 50 pounds a day. Good. Yeah, that's crazy. Just one of those fish looks like a meal to me. <laughs> um, I've probably fed him, uh, you know, probably 15 pounds within this one feed already. And so this is half his base. This full bucket is half of what he eats in one day as well. He's doing such a good job. Let's get him a target up here. Wait. Good. Open. Good. Bark. Good boy. Good water. Good. Good breach. Let's go breach. <laughs> 